Uh, I'm very nervous. Uh, welcome to one of Grivel. Um, uh, my name is Igno Thomas. I'm a 3D artist. I've been using Blender for quite a while. When I started, it was looking like this. Uh, so I will spare you with that. Um, my art, artwork, I'm doing my free time with this. Uh, so random artworks. You might have seen the one with the engines because YouTube thinks uh, you should have seen it. Um, other than that, I'm working full time as an art director, lead artist in a small German company doing spaceships for space art. So, one hour of Google, what is this about? Um, I'm going to show you how I created a workflow in which I just basically copy and paste. Uh, the workflow doesn't contain any add ons or geometry nodes yet. Um, so, this is just showing you how to create big artworks in a very short amount, auto, sh short amount of time. Um, the question is, why do I do this? Um, I usually struggle with larger projects. So in the afternoon when I come home, I usually just got stuck on YouTube or Reddit. Um, and so I set myself like one hour time uh, slot because everyone has an hour of time at the evening and um, set my, the goal to just create something. Um, doesn't have to be good. The goal is not to make something production ready or something final. Um, so in this hour, I, I experimented, and after a few iterations, I got a workflow in which I then create large-scale objects. And the fun thing is, after you've done the one-hour thing, you have an asset which you can later then reuse for something else. So for example, in the top left corner, you see an uh, engine array. This was a piece of a one-hour of Google session, so the engines were done in one hour. And the rest of scene just like in a few afternoon, afternoons as well. Cool. I guess I should start, right? Um, trick. Awesome. Presentation is over. No, this one. Good day. That's me. Uh, window, full screen. Good. Um, so first of all, I would introduce you to the principles of copy and paste. Uh, <laughs> bear with me. Um, of course, you all know the usual shift. Oh wait, screencast keys. Oh no, I don't have them installed. Is it okay if I don't have the uh, shortcuts on screen? Okay. Uh, Shift D, everyone knows about Shift D. You have like multiples of the same cube, and if you edit one cube, it doesn't care about other cubes, so it's just like a bit annoying. Uh, the better way is to Alt D, so you have like link copies. So if you change one cube, and all the others are happy, and change with it. The problem is here, like if I want to add something to the existing cube, um, it doesn't, you have to do it in edit mode. So I have, if I want to add another cube in here, it's like I have to go in edit mode, and then this is not a separate object. Um, also, they're not proper instances yet, so like the overhead of rendering and maintaining them in the scene is not so cool. Um, of course, there's a array modifier and the duplicate words. I'm, I'm going to use the array modifier, but not, I'm not going into particles or how to spread other like randomly. I try to give it a bit more structure. So the last uh, way of copy and paste I usually employ is that I put this cube into a collection called cube, uh, and then can put other cubes into the same collection, so I have several objects. So here is another cube in this object uh, collection, and maybe a monkey that I did. No, I didn't add it to the right collection. Good day. So I've now my nice collection called cube. So you can just hide it, and then magic, you can just say collection instance. I don't want another want my cube collection. So this way, you have like uh, multiple objects in the same uh, collection, and can afterwards change locations or put modifiers on these. Oh, shortcut works. Um, and then can uh, maintain like better the collection of things you want to create with. And the good part is that this is very cheap. So if I have a very heavy asset in here, like a monkey with a lot of polygons, whatever, you can duplicate your collection instances. And it's very light for Blender to maintain a huge amount of geometry that way. So if I have like a million monkeys and cubes and whatever, it's like very smooth and fluid. I don't know how many million polygons you can put on screen, but it's usually just like the amount of object than here problem. And if that's a problem, you just put everything into a new collection, call it Q times two, and then hide this as well, and then just spawn the cube two collection, and then can copy paste this as well. So this is how you get like a billions of billions of monkeys and cubes and it still works fine. So this is the principle of copy and paste. Um, <laughs> uh, Yes, I can kill everything again, goodbye. I'd like you, how many default cubes have you killed? Too many, cool. So the trick or like the workflow of the scenes I create, I need some building blocks. Uh, sometimes everything goes wrong, I just have one and have to work with it, sometimes I have two or three. But uh, the goal is to make one building block which is actually very versatile. 
So um, I, I nice thing, thank you for the person who has invented the bisect, mod uh, bisect feature of the mirror modifier. This is what I'm going to use a lot. So the principle is that I have a, a play or my box, my default cube, I'll just squash it down a bit. So I, like on each axis I have something uh, like a mirror axis. So if I have A here and then B here with a, actually I, I can just uh, put something on top of it so it's easier to see what, what's going on. So on this side I put a, put a cube and on this side I put a monkey. Good day monkey, I like you Susan. Good. And I guess here may be a cylinder. Boop, boop. Good. So I tried to have on each axis of the cube a different looking element. Uh, and then in the mirror modifier, you can just mirror it. And then of course, if you don't use bisect, it's just like all a mess. Uh, by using bisect, it just you say like, I just want to have this side and then cut everything away, which would, would have been mirrored to the other side. So by bisecting it, I now just get uh, the cube on both sides not the uh, cylinder meshed into the, the monkey. So this is nice. And then the good thing is you can just start flipping. So very quickly, you can have a different looking panel. So in this case, maybe I just want uh, a, a plane looking, it's even like a Lego plane here. Uh, you just bisect everything and get nice, uh, nice looking panel which just has the this cylinders on it. Or I just want a, a clean plate or I want a plate with there's the things, and can I get Suzanne, maybe? Um, flip this and flip this, no? Where's Suzanne? Ah, here, oh, perfect. So this way you can have with one single element, uh, lots of looking different looking variations. And then using later arrays on it, you can very quickly uh, quickly flip through the iterations and just change a, the scene to your liking, very quickly. Why did I delete it? I could, I could just reuse it, right? Good, hello. So I am going to create now my first, nice. I'm looking at you, Susan. Oh, she's looking at me. Uh, I'm now creating the first uh, block uh, for the scene and then later we use it to just quickly create something stupid and large. Um, so bear with me, that might take a few minutes for me to actually make the, the shape work. Um, and it's also like a bit weird uh, because it's just like muscle memory. You just boolean some things out of it and you know some patterns work. So it's annoying at the beginning if you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, later you get an experience of what shapes kind of work and then you get much quicker, of course. Um, so of course the first thing, I, I start with like an, not a rec uh, rectang completely rectangular shape, but like, I don't know, I'd start on, don't start with cube, but like an elongated cube. Is this a rectangle then? I don't know. Um, not a square, but a rectangle, yes. Uh, and then split it with the loop cards in half, so I already know where my uh, things are. Um, I also haven't talked about the z-axis. There's a trick which I use to then create some like alpha-looking geometry. We'll get into later, maybe. Um, so yeah, I start, and then the goal for me on the plate is I want one half to be like more smooth and the other one is like very noisy. So I can very quickly then change my panel to be like something very noisy or something very smooth. And then you can like iterate in the greeble because you need, not all, everything should be greeble, you need also like some smooth areas. That's why I start with a smooth area to also get into this talk and not get completely nervous. Um, cool, so just some, um, uh, I don't know. Let's get sorted, hey, awesome. Uh, so I just do an, can I do this? Oop. And it's also very dirty what I'm doing. So we will let us see that we might get artifacts, uh, but there are ways around the artifacts. So I try to, actually I did a mistake already, awesome. Uh, always a bevel at the sides uh, for separation of the panel. So if I array it, that you have like a nice separation. If you don't do it, then it's like, looks a bit, a bit weird. So always a bevel around the corners. And then I now try to actually use some very simple Boolean operations to get some shapes in here. So, boop. hello, the normals are off, always awful at cap because Boolean doesn't work when normals are wrong. So, hey. And I just do it in edit mode. Like I, I don't have to go to the modifiers and uh, add a modifier to Boolean. You can just, hey, normals. Uh, control F to go to the face menu and down there someone implemented the Boolean intersection so very quickly you can get just some nice Boolean shapes um, and then it's just mostly like Boolean some st stuff out of it get some interesting shapes and see what happens in the end uh, I maybe should also think about actually it's already, already getting to be a greeble surface and not a smooth panel stupid me 
uh, I don't know, 60 degrees should be fine, and then this one, oh, 30, good, yeah, should be good enough, so, shade is like that, cool, uh, yeah, I just, so my brain told me this is now a, a very gravely surface, not the smooth panel I wanted to do originally, so I have to do the smooth panel on the other side. But I just go with it and create a funny shape. So maybe, I don't know, some sci-fi stuff where, I don't know, pipes and cables come out of it. Whatever the engineer thought about doing that, and I don't know. Yeah. No, I want you. Hey, awesome. Brain. Good, and go here. Go here. Uh, now I got something interesting, maybe. No, this one was it, right? Yeah. Uh, medium point. I want this. Cool. So, I should delete it. <laughs> So if I now mirror this thing over, I should get already like a nice bisect everything, a nice way of having like a industrial looking shape. And I can then just continue uh, to work through the rest of the asset to see if I can get it uh, nicely tied to the middle. Can I just clip it here? Got it. One thing you might see then later, which is then not cool. Can I see the problem already here? No, I will get to it later. Sometimes you have to delete the face, which is exactly on the symmetry axis, so you don't get like weird standalone faces, and usually you always have a mirror axis on it anyways. So I keep it now in and see later what, what breaks and what doesn't break. Nice, so maybe bevel this one here, that would be cool. Uh, and I guess, I don't know, can I do something crazy? No, it doesn't work, so maybe just a simple cube over here. Bonk. Go here, and I guess we can maybe just do an offset here. Not that? No, not that? Yeah, good. So. Good. So I guess this is a starting point for my first uh, plane. And I probably just still add another, like it looked a bit empty in the middle, so I just pull out something new now here. And hope I don't destroy anything. Good. Can you go over here? Yeah, good. Perfect. So, first panel is done, I would say. And then I just continue working on the other side of the panel. Um, so now I probably should do the smooth one. Uh, oh, yeah, she has no face, cool. So I can probably just continue this here, over to the other side, maybe here, that's cool. Um, around, I oh, can do this. So now just like going through the shape language I have in my brain and just flow with it, just experimenting with shapes. Usually it's like just try to get a trench in there, put a cube in there so it's like nicely framed, um, put another shape on top and then try to alternate the, the way the bevels are doing. So now the bevel is like on the, what is it, y-axis. So it's always nice if you then alternate the axis, so it's nice to bevel this corner. So you get like a nice interplay of how shapes and surfaces are intersecting with each other. So it's always a nice little thing I try to do, like in, try to vary the order of the bevels. Cool, so something is here, whatever this is. Um, should I continue this over here? Mm. No. I guess I need to connect this dude with the rest here. Actually, I could probably then just do, the, do a dirty... Oh god, that looks horrible. <laughs> Can I do this? Oh yeah, yeah, looks... Uh, hey, my shortcuts work, good. First time working on Linux and uh, trying to get your key map in here. Thanks, Francesco. I guess extrude here, maybe. I don't want to have it too noisy again. Like it's very easy to just 
get noisy. Let's just level this corner. Is that smooth? Probably good enough for the talk. <laughs> I also have my time run next to me. I have my phone telling me I'm almost 15 minutes into the talk. It's always an eye on the time because that's what you're doing. Like you have set yourself one hour of time. So don't get caught in the small little details and just try to get just like head on, continue, continue, continue. Um, because in the end, it doesn't really matter that much what how the small little shapes look like. Good, uh, test. So this one is good, I can flip. Now you can see the problem with the face in the middle and I can just delete it because I don't like it. You will then see the open edge in rendering this is not there usually. Like so, it's gone. And now I just, I was a bit dirty here where they complete two faces exactly on the same plane. Yeah, just, we, we just hide it by moving it probably a bit inwards, so goodbye. <laughs> It's dirty, should work. Good, so now I have like a, like a more smooth surface, I have a creepily surface, and now I can just do the second variation of each by using the other side of the uh, of, of this face here. So I can make a super creepily and a nicer smooth surface. Um, so I again do like, that was a bad level. Uh, then I continue just to the other side, and maybe what do I do? Should I continue the whole thing with it? Or just this one? I don't know. Uh, stop thinking, just making. Uh, some cubes, some blocks. Awesome, down here. Hey. Not over here. And I don't know what our engineer is doing. Not what I'm doing, maybe like that here. And then this guy's. Oh, that looked nice. That's a good idea. Random accidents, always good. Good, so that was good. And then probably another boolean works as well. Like if you have uh, cylindrical shapes, always put a boolean on there. And then make the boolean like, uh, like a white boy, like this. And then just pull in there. I don't know if I should go f through there and then just make this a bevel, and now you have a nice intersecting boolean shape, so does it work? Yeah, that's always cool. Cool. And then just put something inside of it again, because that's what we're doing. Cubes and cubes and cubes. Cool. So noisy, and then I could probably some... Can I get some kind of... I don't... not a pipe? Oh, that was a cool shape. Uh, here. Pop. Awesome. Good, so I got a weird shape and I did something bad. I did here copy and paste inside the object. Usually I tell myself never copy and paste stuff inside of the Greeble bit because then you should use a modifier for it. Um, so don't try to get too much repetition inside of the object and just try to be simple, singular objects and the repetition comes hap later than with the array modifiers. Um, so yeah, something here, and repeat the same shape again, just like that, smaller. And then you have like, whatever this is, some cool. Can I just be dirty? Yeah. No one's going to see that. Good. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, now I could try to see how that looks. All right, so I flip this around. It's this one, so check this. So here's another polygon, which I don't like. XF, bye bye. And it feels like a bit empty. I could try to cut something out of here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Like that. And then like that. Like that. And you go here, maybe two. F Actually, no, I shouldn't do that. And go here. Oh, because I was exactly on the edge. And this was, of course, another face. Good. Does it work? It does work. Good. 
and keep blender. And then if you have just a simple bevel, just offset the edges always. Gets a nice shape. It looks much more to my liking. Cool. So I've now got a Weeble plate for this. If I flip it, I got empty plate. Cool. Uh, then the smooth plate and whatever this both of them, then I have that, this guy. Cool. I could now do the, the last smooth plate. What shall we do in here? Smooth stuff? I don't know. Uh, maybe just a simple... Oh, I, I got a shape. I got a shape. Uh, this one works always. Like, you got to take yourself a cube. Nice. And then you just make the cube a bit wider on the top, like times two, maybe. Then you just level edges. And then use the same cube and just mirror it once. So I got a whatever tapered cube, and then take this guy again. Awesome, typical sci-fi shape. And then we just pull it in, and now I do like this trick that you take it above and through the surface, so it's no negative, uh, like goes through this block and deeps into the other one, because then you get like some some weird effects, which I like. Uh, shift edge, yeah, good. Because if you then do the z-axis, like if I don't do z-axis mirroring and just take all the panels, I get like a closed panel. And by then taking the z-axis on it, I get a transparent panel. So it can be pretty dirty. And I think I didn't do it for this one. Did it? Did I? Did I? Obviously I didn't. So I should put just put this also like through the axis. So I get now then transparent stuff. So if I then just use this panel, which one is it? Searching for the panel, hey, cool. So you can decide if you want to have it like transparent or opaque. So that way you can just break up the shapes pretty nicely later for silhouettes and whatever. It's always nice, cool. Um, I'm done with, like this is my final smooth panel. This is like award winning. Cool, so uh, 22 minutes, or oh, two minutes after my, okay, I should hurry up. Good, uh, I got now my cube, and I put this into my uh, Grieb bit collection. So I put them, if I have I've later some, some more, I probably need some pipes, so I will do some pipes, but I just have one collection where I just have like these atomic blocks for my scene. And I should probably kill all the other collections. Goodbye, good. Um, and then I just duplicate this dude. Uh, I first can disable all the modifiers and move it into scene, like a, I don't know, scene, or I, a call it equity on. Because I never know what I'm going to do, so I just need it to be separated from the Weeble bits. It's just now linked instance, so if I ever go back to the Weeble bits, this guy just updates like what you've seen before. Um, now the task is to make myself a block for the scene. Um, so I usually try to get a very basic volume on which I then slap the grid bits on. Because if you just work with the panels, you always get like holes and like open surfaces, and that's like not so cool. So I don't know. Uh, can I go to window, window, window? Go back to the first picture. Uh, dunk, dunk. Like, like if you see here, like the grid bits are only on the surface of it, and behind is like just a volume to just block the block the view. So that's what that's of what I'm going to do. Trying to get a volume, put the grebe bits on, and window, full screen, need more pixels, <laughs> yay, cool. Um, so, I guess I just enable my symmetry stuff and then pick a grebe bit I like. I don't know, this is probably the basic one. And then you start with arrays, because arrays are cool. Good, array it. Amazing. Uh, duplicate. So I array it now on the other one, zero, one, cool. Hey, cool, now I got like a array panel. What you can then do is, for example, I like this surface, I duplicate this thing, and I made the panel exactly like snap to the grid, so I can now just move it by snapping it around. And also fun thing with the mirror modifier, because now I have like two panels, I guess I just need one here, two thirds, one third is a general design rule, try to have two thirds clean, one third super noisy, if you can even say by clean and noisy and rebels, but they to try to still balance it. I can now go back to my mirror modifier and say I want to have this very noisy panel. So I just search, well, this was cleaner. That's not what I want. Uh, this dude, for example. So this is like a very, very noisy dude. Or can I probably, I don't know, this one? No, actually this, this one is better. So I've got a very noisy panel. I now see that I should have done like a more horizontal shape in there. Doesn't matter. Um, I could maybe rotate this. and just change how the error modifiers work. So this guy is one, and this dude, good day. Damn it. 
Oh, same actually, uh, 180. Cool. So that's why I can just make this all work. Cool. So now I have like a, a unit of two panels. Uh, with this one, like one third is noisy, the other third is clean. And now I just, I forked my, my base shape. Awesome. Uh, oh, local. Please make me global. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I just make the, the the first volume block. So big cube, I don't know, make it, what is that, two meters by two meters usually, so by times by five is 10 meters, so I don't know, I want to have it like 100 meters? No, not for this talk. Uh, 0.5. Is that 50 meters? Are you a 50 meter cube now? No, 500, awesome. 50, awesome, cool. So, scale. And then I just try to get some very basic uh, shapes now, maybe like a big ass bevel. Um, I should probably shift D this, hide it, and then move this down. And then just fill them. Awesome. So now I have like a very basic generic shape I can work with. And I probably should also do. Uh, can I do this? Point 0.2. That should be 10 meters. And just get a volume out of it uh, 20. Maybe. No, 10. Uh, just some some uh, shape in there to just give it, give it some depth. So later, if I duplicate this thing with arrays and collection instances, you get like in, like some rhythm into it and like depth and overlap. Um, so to get a more interesting shape. So I just take what I did here before my two. First of all, this is like I don't know um, block no block zero one, and these dudes can go here. Hey, ninety degrees, and also just like put plaster them on top of the surface like it doesn't have to be super detailed you just want to cover the the boring the boring bits and I don't know I, I should have probably moved the walls a bit in yeah I learned my stuff good so I'm not snapping not two meters but like tenth of centimeters so I can be on top and not inside the surface should have done this better okay um yeah and then just copy paste so this guy goes here and I just try to uh, vary the look of it, maybe like this is cool, don't know. I could also try to move these guys over here and then use a different creepily bit. I got like the other shape. Uh, this guy, no. This guy, this guy, awesome. Uh, 90. So maybe this cool is cool to just have it follow the surface. Nope. And cool. So now I just like, where are you? 10, 9, 9, 9. Oh, eight. Eight, eight, eight. It would be awesome if you could link them together. So if you just change one value, all of them are linked and uh, substance designer stuff. Cool. Uh, so now just try to frame like the, the vertical block here with like uh, with the agreeable bit so it's not doesn't look so disconnected. So someone put some thought into how we modeled or like designed this element, like the engineer in this world thought about it. Is it? Five degrees, yeah, cool. 40, 50 degree angles, very simple to then just copy this thing on. And you might now see that, um, can I just be dirty and make it a lot of them? Yeah, I could do this. So now you see like I have, I'm modeling one side, and of course I need the other side to be the same as well. Um, you could now just copy paste it over, but I'm here to tell you how to copy paste correctly. Um, so you just put an empty in there, slap it in the scene, like, uh, I hope it's in the center, yeah? And then never touch it again. Like this is your your friend. Good. Hidden in the corner, not enough pixels. You can then disable the the selection. So hi, uh, I call it E mirror Z1. Uh, so this is my base mirror uh, base mirror empty. In the center of the scene, I use it then in the mirror modifier to tell the pieces please uh, mirror I based on the object origin of this empty to the other side. So just and I should have yeah, I just add this on the end and then say E mirror. You just type in mirror. And I got it on the other side. Awesome. So now I just, can I copy this? What? Can I copy this guy? No, I can't. Damn it. So I have to redo this now. I added it too late, sadly. So mirror modifier. Uh... You know what happens when I do this? <laughs> then, uh, sadly, I can't. Good point. Uh, if I say copy modifies, bonk, it's like it changes the, because I'm using the first mirror modifier. Usually, yeah. Usually you add, add this scene mirror modifier only once in the world, and then it's like, 
in all of the objects already set up, so it's now I did it a bit too late in the in the in the talk. Uh, please collapse all. Hey, mirror. Anyways, uh, hey, mirror. Good. So this is done. This is done. I could now copy these, I think, because they are like, donk. Copy modifiers. Yeah, works. Because they are just identical copies, and then this guy also needs one. And of course, bisect works there as well because now this one is, I think, intersecting with the middle uh, mirror. Oh, is he? Is he intersecting? Yeah, he's now, he has some overlap happening. It should be like black now. Of course, bisect works here as well, so you just hide it. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and I guess I just, I'm just lazy and just make this thing a bit longer. Where is my first array? I need more pixels. Wrong axis. Uh, this dude. Good day, yeah, nice. So, uh, this one should move here, and two, no, it's this one. Bonk. Good. So now the surface is kind of filled, and I just need to put something around here as well. So I just, like, I don't know, uh, copy it over here. Awesome. And then, like, later you don't, you don't really have to worry about intersections because you won't see this in the final file at all. So now I'm, I'm just lazy right now, probably a six, and then I could put someone on the corner, which looks a bit different. Would be nice, I think. Uh, one, don't need it, and then just flip the uh, look of it again by just changing, I don't know which one looks good. This one, maybe, cool, yeah. But it's not, yeah, it's too similar. I just take this one, okay. Good. Six, seven, eight, uh, I need some more here, cool. Not mirror modifier because I'm stupid. I uh, get a mirror modifier on it. And I take my mirror bonk. Good, and do the same here. Mirror modifier. Good. Or DRZ90 minus. Put it on the other side here. And put this dude. Minus as well. So now we should have a bisect. Good. Good. And I forgot the mirror modifier. Hey. Good. So first block down, roughly. Um, this is a collection, cool, and the block should be into this collection, and the collection is then called... Oh, I have a block. <laughs> Another block. Good. I should, should have moved it the other way around. Uh, tick, delete, uh, bonk. Good. So I have a block. Um, I hide the block. I don't need the block. I want instance of the block. So you take the another block connection, collection, and start your scene with this. So I've now like an asymmetrical shape, and the fun thing with collections is you can't put an array modifier on there, so you sadly have to copy paste, um, and then just copy paste by a certain iteration, like distance. I just try to snap it by grid, and then the good thing is you can just scale them on the z-axis by minus one to mirror them. So you can just like have like an, an overhang or something, and then you can as well just rotate them by ninety degrees. Uh, the other 90 degrees. Two, can I put it then in there? Is it a good shape? Maybe not. This one should move over here, try to get the symmetry in there. That's not cool yet. How do I do it? Sh I should probably rebuild this side as well, because now I see like a very large open face. Hey, good. Um, a problem for later, you know. I just put it in here, inside. And just create, try to get, uh, create a, a interesting looking shape. Minus one. Cool. I like this. Should work. Cool. And then you could put this whole thing again into its own collection. Uh, good. Good. And then hide this one guy and then add my another other block. Cool, and then this thing is the one I built the seamless. So this guy is just like, uh, same trick again, minus one, now I just can create very large sh scenes without having, like the first block 
collection instance with the block in there gives me a rhythm. So I just have like the three blocks or like the two blocks and then by adding them into a single block and then copy and pasting them, I get a rhythm. It's not like just copy, 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 it, but like ding, 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 it looks, looks nicer. If you get a rhythm and like it's lies in that's it's it's difficult. So now I just copy paste this guy again and get like my cipher scene. And you might think, okay, um, cubes are cool. Well, it's like cube. There's better things than cubes, right? Like cylinders, spheres. So we do know cylinders and spheres. Good. Um, but it's with this, it's still the same block because I'm lazy. Good. And first of all, uh, all these guys should go into a collection, but I don't instance it. I just take my scene. So new collection, call the scene. Uh, scene, bonk. And then it goes away and put it to the top. Otherwise, you will lose it. Greenwoods. Um, I go back to my Greenwoods collection and hello, my small friend. It's there. Uh, all D. Move it to my new collection. Call it. I don't know. I want to do a cylinder. C cylinder. Bonk. Uh, put a name in there. A number. Naming convention and stuff. Otherwise, you have lots of weird names for collections. <laughs> Good. Uh, same trick again here. I want to array this thing a lot of times. Boom, 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 boom. And then how to make a cylinder. You can use a simple deform modifier. I love and hate it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so please. Hope. So you can just say, I want to bend it by 90 by, by a cylinder, 360 degrees. So if you bend it by 90 degrees, it's horrible. Uh, this guy here, cool, 90 degrees, that's not a cylinder, uh, 360 degrees, it's still not a cylinder. So, and then you can't, there's no way of changing the axis directly in here, so we have to add another empty to tell the empty to rotate a different way. So, array, and of course with the length of the ray, you then change the radius of the graph. So in this case, I just add another mirror, em no, empty, and I call it uh, E, simple deform, SD01, uh, and parent it then to this dude. So I can move this guy together with empty um, and don't get problems like that on the route. Cool, uh, SD, bonk, here. So by having this guy now, can I get you? ESD, yeah, bonk. I cannot change the axis of the simple deform modifier, right? Can do fancy stuff with like 45, okay. We just do 90 degrees and we just want to panel on the outside. So now this way I can get like cylinders and again change very quickly then how the cylinder looks like. Is it a smooth looking cylinder or is it like a, uh, I don't know, noisy one. And here you can change the radius. If you do, if you like work very dirty like me, you just have to fix it in a very dirty way. You just let in sub D. Don't don't crash. Oh, oh. <laughs> There's an auto save. I don't need a save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably killed it. Damn it. It's not that many polygons yet. Should be fine. It's famous last words. Should be fine. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Why was it so slow? Anyways, I'm, I'm not touching it. <laughs> Usually you put then the subdivision surface at the very top, so it, you don't have like these weird artifacts. You just do it on simple, not on this Catmull Clark, on simple and just get rid of the artifacts that way. It doesn't solve the, I, I wanted to try to get the edges a bit nicer. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm not touching it again for this talk. I'm, I'm sweating like my fingers are so wet already. <laughs> uh, good, uh, 38 minutes. Okay, we should get going. Uh, I duplicate this guy. Huge cylinder. Uh, change the axis to be here, and now I can make a long cylinder. And uh, of course, uh, go back to my mirror modifier and just change what the cylinder is about, like noisy as, that looks weird, interesting. Made, oh, even I have the transparent now, it's like I can look through it. That's cool, that's cool. I dig it. So maybe, yeah, I can use it. So this guy then goes to a collection. It's a collection already, a cylinder one. Um, and then I go to my scene and can probably just add, actually now I go to the another, another block scene uh, and put in here the collection for the uh, cylinder one. So I can have now some cylinder shapes in here to break up um, like the, the very simple blocks, get some secondary details on there. And I don't know, maybe here, and Probably just have to grieve a bit. Uh, no, it's the cylinder. Go here, make it longer. Uh, da, 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 array here. Yeah, good. Cool. Could be fine. No, a bit more. Good. That now should be good enough. And then I just do stuff with it. Like maybe two here, one here. And then maybe it's also cool to just rotate them by 90 degrees again. And I don't know, have them. Somewhere, maybe I don't know. 
get some depth into the shape, uh, like fill, fill your trenches a bit. And if I now go back, hide this, hey, good. Oh, should go here. So my scene, I should have now, where did I hide it? <laughs> Was it here? In which collection are they? Uh, don't. Naming functions, you sh should stick to them. Uh, this is my scene should go away, and this is my, no, this is the 701 collection. Okay, good, fix it. Put the source cylinder into the wrong collection. Cool. Uh, oh, I duplicated everything and didn't mirror it. Okay. Uh, go over here. Good enough, and then maybe just put one here in the middle. Cool. So now I have cylinders. It's like beautiful artwork right now. Um, and I want something more, like spheres. So how do you sp do spheres? Where's my cylinder one? Uh, I just take this dupli and duplicate it, the hierarchy, because then I don't have, let's, have less setup work, duplicate collection, good. And then by just renaming it to sphere, it becomes magically not a sphere. So what we do is we just hide, first of all, the simple deform on the top and uh, we just disable it. So the f this one just does a 360 degree taper. I make it a bit wider so I get more radius and less high. Where's the other one? Array less, maybe like five. Good. So by having a wide base, 20, good. So as you can see, it's just like I have a flat panel which I bend by 360 degree to get like a cylinder. So when we bend, instead of a plane, a another 90 degree bend surface and bend this by 360 degree, we get a sphere. Or like half a sphere and then we remember it over to the other side. So what I'm now having to do is to just add another simple date form in front of this and hopefully not break it horribly, but have it by 90 degrees. So 90 degrees and then enable it. So I have, a, have it bent like this, but in this direction. Mm -hmm. So if I now have this and bend it by 360 <laughs> degree, we should be fine. Yeah, almost there. Oh, nice should we add cups? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I can add cups. Um, just to show, I think the... No, no, no. <laughs> Three. So by changing the... It doesn't get perfect, but by changing the, the amount of the arrays, you can then change the shape to be a cup or like a sphere. And then you can put a mirror modifier on there again at the very end. Where's mirror? Hey, mirror's here. So just take the one mirror object we have, bisect everything, and then just hope there's somewhere something for a sphere. So this is how I get spheres and then place spheres in the scene. And you just have to a ball. You don't get it perfect, but it's good enough for the Greeble workflow to just get something round in there. So someone asked for a cup. Like okay. this cup. Array, array. Like this one was longer, right? Mm. It's like, a, is it nice? Well, I just take it. Whatever. So it's now uh, candy. Candy. Oh, uh, one. Awesome. Space candy. Oh, Space candy. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Awesome. So go back to my... And now the question if I just add it to the scene collection, independent of my blocks, or if I put it to the blocks and whatever. Um, another another block? Maybe I try to see what happens here. So I go in here, put my... Click on this one this time, so yeah, it's actually to this. Space candy! How big is my space candy? Good. Why not, right? So I could just add space candy here. <laughs> Let me be in the middle here, like this, 90 degrees, and Space Candy is here, and then just duplicate Space Candy. Space Candy. Good. And maybe we can do Space Candy down here as well. Just hide some more plane surfaces, maybe, like that. Cool. What I usually try to avoid is to scale these guys. So otherwise you just lose your reference of scale if like one of the panels is then different, differently sized. Cool. Um, yeah, space candy. Good. If you now go back to, probably should add something. Come on, mouse cursor. Here, 44 minutes. Okay, getting there. Good. If I now hide it and go to my scene, I should have like something very high poly something. I probably should add some brown spheres in the middle later for design. It's always like just vertical lines are not nice to look at. I usually try to break up it with larger spheres now like 
I probably I should have made the design a bit different and get a big shape in the middle, like a round shape, and then just instead of copy pasting or, and just mirroring it, you can just do like sh uh, duplicate the collection and rotate around the cursor, 3D cursor, to get like an array, radial array. Can also use uh, the geometry nodes for this. Um, but yeah, the, for, for dem demonstration reasons, it's a bit simpler for me to just stick to 90 degrees, but you could do just round stuff. So um, I guess I should just quickly render this dude or make something. Uh, Poor guy. <laughs> Camera, okay, good, so, space. Oh, I don't have the, no. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Navio, Navi, flight camera, is it right? Fly navigation, can I add a shortcut? Should I, awesome, good. Nope. That's weird. It's, 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 it's like different to the one I've mapped. But uh, it, it uh, again? The, the FPS camera is walk, camera. walk camera, okay. So so I should uh, fly camera. First of all, unmap this, remove the shortcut, and then walk navigation, you say? Yeah. Walk navigation. Ooh. Today I learned. Thank you. So camera, I should have. Ah, oh, thank you. So render it. Right now, probably very boring. Yes, very boring. So first of all, uh, I just use notes and use a Nikisha sky texture. Uh, that should be usually good enough. Uh, and I go back to my Greeble bit collection. Actually, I can just keep it on and then don't die. Good. Scene, 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 Greeble bit. And now I just have to add a material to my cube. Is it is it CPU or GPU? Oh, that's why so. Does it work? Oh, edit preferences. Uh, system. Cuda optics, yes please. Oh, good graphics card. Good processor. Mm, nice. Like it. Uh, can I close here? Much better. Cool. Good PC. I like it. Uh, good. I wanted to add a material. So usually for I have some. I usually have material with like ambient occlusion and whatever in there, like a predefined uh, uh, shader already. Uh, right now for. Just this test, it's probably just good enough to, just, to use a principled BSDF, uh, make it rather dark because of the very bright sky, and then make it metallic, because space is met metallic for some reasons, uh, and make it then a bit, play around with roughness until you find something which looks decent. I should probably denoise it, right? Oh, I did a mistake. The space, uh, what is it? The space candy doesn't have the same object, it's not linked. That's bad. Uh, denoise. What's that here? Denoise, 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 dear, denoise, hey, thank you. Good, so we can see stuff. Space candy, where's my space candy? Uh, here, that was bad. So, space candy. Uh, space candy should get this material, but also the same object again. Cube, why didn't I? I should rename my, my meshes uh, space uh, candy, and the other one is cube, 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 uh, block. So I cannot make this base candy actually use a block mesh. So it's all linked again. That I just use Shift D instead of Alt D, which is not good. So back to my camera, goodbye, Grebovitz. Go to the scene, camera, goodbye. So now I have my awesome material assigned to it and the block should also get it. Uh, another block, <laughs> the main block. Is it this one? Oh yeah, that's this one. Awesome, cool, bonk. So now you don't see this, but the, the, the volume should also have the same material, of course. Um, what's looking usually good is that I just add a volume to hide my ugly modeling. So just make it big, so you don't see stuff. Uh, apply the scale, otherwise everything breaks. New material as for fog. Uh, we don't like a surface, bye bye. And I go to the volume and add a volume, principal surface, a volume, bonk. And then we should have something. It's too dense. Interest? Oh no. You have to go in and out of the camera. Someone had the same issue already, like was doing goo. I don't know why I'm doing that. But yeah, good. Uh, change the density until you see stuff. Cool. Hide this. And now I rotate the sunlight until I think there's something nice happening. Maybe like this. Get some nice silhouette in there. Innovation. 
and like that. And now I can go back to my volume. Volume, good. Uh, volume. Uh, and change the density to a bit, bit higher, maybe like this. Cool. Uh, what's help, uh, helpful for me is, as usual, just add the anisotropy very high. So what it like scatters towards the sunlight. It gets like a better gradient. You get better rays. So just play around with anisotropy. Really cool thing. Too much. Cool. Um, sometimes what's helpful, because I've now the sun very low, um, I should probably, I just show it what I'm sometimes doing for getting like this artistic look of the of the scenes, is that I put in the volume like ridiculous numbers, like something that doesn't make any sense. So emission color or the absorption color, I put like something very high in here, and then a full color, but not a full color, like just a saturation of like 0.99 or something. And then you can play around with the hue and just get like a very nice, crazy scenes. Uh, I just stick now to the like red because like more like a, a sunset. And density, maybe a bit more. No, that was the same number. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. So, my also like uh, VTOM, so high contrast, meme high contrast, cool. There's my camera, 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 yeah. And then you just look around for, for nice shots, right? You just search for uh, a nice composition and explore your scene, what you rebuild. And uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's what I'm doing for my, for my artworks. I don't know, here, can I get close? And the advantage is now, I, th I think it's now like very flat and doesn't have depth to it. I can now get, go back to the, I have like nine minutes. Oh, actually, no, it's 51 minutes. I'm bad. Um, I should go, ooh, uh, stop rendering. What I can now quickly do is go back to my blocks I created and just slap in some, some shapes. So this is my source block. So if I need some dimensional uh, noise in there, like antennas or something sticking out of the block, I could create a new Grebo bit and just scatter around here and get just some dimensional noise in there. Good, like that. And because it's all not yet in the, col in the collection, good. It should appear in the scene as well. So I get like more uh, depth into it and get overlap and more lens flares and rays. So yeah, uh, that's how to copy and paste in Blender. Thank you.